Let's pray. God, thank you for that truth, and thank you for your love. Thanks for bringing us here together this last chapel Tuesday of the semester. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Man, thank you for that um, time of worship. The evidence of God. What is what is faith, anyways? You know, what is what is this thing that we ask you to embrace, um, or that many of us do embrace? What is faith? And I think that's a, a question that each semester I, I want to, to deal with. I do that in my Christian Faith and Life class. I know that. We start our classes talking about what is faith? What, what, how do we define it? And we always kind of end up at the same like place. Like faith is believing, trusting in something that we don't necessarily see or that thing that can't be proved and have you ever believed in something that you haven't been able to to see you know that song talked about the evidence of faith the evidence of of God's presence and and do people see the evidence of God's presence in our world and in our lives? Simon Peter, the great apostle, the, the one who walked on the water for a moment, the, the leader of the early church, he writes about faith and what it could look like. He was writing to people in uh, what is now modern-day Turkey, and he's talking to them about this thing called faith. And in 1 Peter chapter uh, 1, verse 8 and 9, he says this, So you have not seen God, you believe in him. And even though you do not see him now, you trust in him. You love him. For you know, for you know that you are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy, for you are receiving the goal of your faith, You are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy, for you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your soul. And and I think that's interesting. You are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of soul, even though you haven't seen the Lord. And and so Peter is, is trying to tell us, okay, what is this faith thing? It's something that we believe in even though we haven't seen it. One of our stated goals at SNU is that we would make Christ-like disciples, that we would embrace, that would embrace faith, which means believing wholeheartedly even without seeing. It means believing so passionately that because we believe, it changes us a little bit. We don't just believe in God. We believe that God matters. We believe that God matters enough that it could change you. I began this whole school year with, the, with a verse from Revelation 3.20. As we began to think about this idea of hope. But it was, it was just Jesus knocking at the door saying, now pay attention I'm standing at the door, I'm knocking. If any of you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and I will be with you. I will have dinner at your table. Here's the deal. I believe all year long. Are you with me? Can I just get eyes just up here just for a second? We're almost done. I've asked the band to stay up here because we're going to worship. I believe all year long. Are you leaning in? I believe that God has been trying to get some of your attention. I believe that perhaps God has been present, but you haven't noticed the evidence And I really am convinced that God stands at the door of your heart and 
asks and waits for you to invite him into your life. And it's not lost on me. It's been, a, it's been challenging. It's been a struggle this semester. I mean, the reality is we've talked about hope and how hope can overflow and should overflow. But our world is, is tough. It's, it's a place where if we chose to, we'd have the right to feel hopeless. If we wanted to, we certainly could, could uh, feel like, you know, we, we are alone. It's easy to isolate ourselves, but we don't have to. You don't have to. Could it be that this God that has been trying to get your attention all semester in various ways, through professors that always kind of share their hearts and do their devotions uh, and and love you and, and take time for you, through chapel, through whatever church you're involved in, through, through whatever friendship groups you've, you've made, could it be that God is trying to get your attention so that he can simply be with you and change you and bring this kind of inexpressible and glorious joy into your life? Because I believe that's what he wants to do, to bring this inexpressible and glorious joy it's been a, a year of suffering for many, for trials. Some of you, I know, have lost loved ones and are dealing with that. Um, and it's, it's hurt. I mean, even recently, we've had some of our students who have family members pass. Relationships that didn't work out. Um, you know, parents divorcing, diseases attacking, broken collarbones, um, bad grades, just, just name it. I mean, there's been a lot of things that, that have gone wrong for some of us. But though we could walk away from this year in hopelessness, we serve a God that gives us hope. I guess the question is, I mean, do you believe that? Maybe that's the, the only question. Though you have not seen him, you believe him. And you guys can come get back in place. Though you have, have not seen him, you believe him. And even though you do not see him now, you love him. And you're filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. I love that. For you are receiving the goal of your faith. I love that it says you are receiving. That's so present tense, isn't it? You are receiving the goal of your faith. It doesn't say you received it once when you were in fourth grade and you prayed that God would come into your heart. Or you received it once back in the past. It says you are receiving. It doesn't say you will receive it when you die and you go to heaven. It says you are receiving now the goal of your faith. What is the goal? The salvation of your soul. Salvation is not something that you just get to go to heaven. Salvation is this active thing that is present on earth that brings you this inexpressible joy and hope. And it brings good news to other people who have none. People who have none. And I just pray today that you might understand that you can leave this chapel service today with, filled with this inexpressible joy by just being attentive to the God that's standing at the door and knocking and inviting you in, inviting you and him into relationship. So today we're going to close in worship. And... Here's how we're going to do it. I have talked ahead of time to some faculty and some staff and some administrators, and they're going to just go all the way across this room. There, there are spots that they're going to stand at. And they're going to stand there and worship, and we're going to spend some time in the presence of the Lord where we've already been in. 
And then we're going to ask you if you'd like, and we do this with seniors every year. Um, it's important for us to pray for our seniors. So if you're a senior, we want you to come by and pick one of these faculty members that's standing around the room. And, and we want you to be prayed for. We want you to be prayed for. It doesn't have to be a prayer of, oh, God, come into my heart. It could be. It could just be just a prayer that for the summer or a prayer for your, your future or whatever it is that you like. So if the faculty and staff administration, would you come and just kind of be, fill uh, the spots that you're supposed to be at? And we're going to take two or three songs of, of prayer and, and time for you just to rest and to be in his presence and to allow some of these people that you love and that have loved you to pray for you. And you can see they're all, uh, there's some in the back as well. And uh, just, we want you to move. You don't have to, but we want you to feel invited to come and just line up and be prayed for by these amazing people, my friends. Okay, so let's go to worship. God, thank you for this time. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>